Hi, this is Dina with Pretty Productive. We're a mother-daughter Etsy shop that sells all things planner and budget related. Today we're going to be setting up our February 2020 budget and do cash stuffing. So if you followed our channel for a while, you know that our income kind of totally changed. My husband retired, then he got another job, and it's been a wild roller coaster through the month of January. So I'm not gonna really do a January month end recap. Um, we ended up not getting a check at the end of the month, and then we got two checks, but we don't know what's happening. So anyways, I'm gonna do it with the budget that I think we're gonna have going forward, and I think that's just gonna be the safest thing. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start with our work in progress or the sheet that I kind of use to set everything up. I'll kind of zoom in here a little bit. So for <clears throat> income, I think what we're going to have are three paychecks. Um, so it is higher than it was in the past, but I don't know if this, if this is right because I need to call the state because his retirement check should have been one thing, but it was more. And then we got another check, which it might have been for January that we just got in February. So I'm not really sure what's going on. And then what is the same though is um, bills and expenses. So on my fixed expenses, um, the only two that are currently not confirmed are my electric bill and my gas bill. Everything else has come in. And then in lifestyle and cash stuffing envelopes, I'm pretty much gonna leave them the same. What will be different this time is the sinking fund. So I have different sinking funds now. One of the things, um, that we found out in his retirement paperwork was we have this really lovely medical fund that we didn't even know about. Um, plus we still have money in our HSA account that has to be used this year. So I no longer have a dental fund because I was saving to get Invisalign and then eventually an implant, but there's more than enough money to do that. And since that has to be a medical expense, I'm gonna go ahead and do the one I know for sure. Um, but I did create some new sinking funds as well. And then debt stays the same. The only thing I did differently this month was Capital One, which is where all of my subscriptions and everything get billed to. Um, I just cleared at the end of the month, but this month I went ahead and put it on here. And I've been doing that just to give myself a real visibility to what actually is going on that card. So if it's a cash envelope, say for an example, groceries, but I use HelloFresh, that money stays in the account. Capital One is the card that is on file with HelloFresh. And then I just take the money from my grocery fund and put it in my um, bill fund so that I pay that off. So I'm just really try, trying to keep a watch on that, make sure I don't overspend in any category because I'm using the card as well as using the account. And then everything balances as it should. So let's go ahead and take what's on here and transfer it into this. Um, this is the Deluxe Monthly, the 7x9. Um, this is a kit from our shop. It's one of our newest kits. I thought it looked kind of February-ish. February-ish? <laughs> that a word? Um, and then these are the stickers that we do. We do custom stickers for paychecks and things like that. So when I look at income first, so we think um, we're going to have three checks this month. And I always just combine them and then divide it by how many checks just to make my life easier. What will be very different now is that my husband and I both get paid once a month. So when I'm doing the cash stuffing, I'm gonna do the first and the 15th versus when he would get a second check. Just to keep it easy. Instead of pulling all the money out of the account at the beginning of the month, I'm gonna leave it in there till the 15th and then I'll decide what I need to pull out for the second cash stuffing. I think that'll be easier. Uh, my daughter pays me, one daughter pays me 200, the other one pays me 180. My expense check should be back to normal at 164. Um, for debt snowball, um, Barclay is at 15. 72, I'm making a $200 payment. There's no interest, so my new balance is 1372. 
Um, Chase, you're gonna see this one went up because I put something on that that I prepaid for a conference that I'm doing it in the end of May. Um, and I've also created a sinking fund for that, but I went ahead and paid the entrance fee, which was like $600. So that did go onto this card, but I'm still paying it this month. Um, so the balance was 3,400. I'm making a $1,500 payment. There's zero interest and I will have 19, I wish, 2,800 on there. I do have to have this paid off by May, so I'm gonna start really throwing money at that one. <clears throat> so, let's see here. So, 1,700 is my total payments. And I did not bring a calculator over here. Okay, so when we look at sinking funds, I always back into this because you really never know what's gonna go in here until you've got everything else down. So I'm gonna leave this for a moment and I'll come back to sinking funds. So for my fixed expenses, I know how much these are gonna be. So my mortgage is 3,300. Now we are paying extra on this to have it paid off a little quicker. Um, my electric, <clears throat> I do not know what it's gonna be. In my yearly, um, breakdown for February. It's really low. It's $123 last year, but I don't really trust that number. So I'm going to put 200 down. It hasn't really been, uh, as warm in January as we have in the past. So we've kind of had the heat on a little bit. So it may go up a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to leave that at 200 water and trash has, um, that bill has come in and that's 143. My telephone is 45, that's the same. Life insurance, 106. Car insurance, 302. Natural gas, um, this one is another one. I'm estimating it at 60. And last year it was, I think right around that, like 50, was 49. So, I always rather estimate a little bit high. Um, Netflix is 15, internet is 100. Now this did go down $10 when we stopped renting their um, router. Um, clothing, I put in 300. I have not bought clothes in a while. I know I'm gonna need some things for summertime. Etsy shop, I put in 300. HOA, I'm putting in 75, though I just paid it, so I'll put in 75 for the next two months and then the third month it'll be due again. Unbudgeted, I'm not budgeting. Pest control is this month, so it's 90. Mobile phone was 379. Ali Edwards is 15. Elements is 70. Audible is 16. Amazon Prime, I just paid. I'm not gonna put anything into that. And then, let's see. So that should, if everything is right on here, should equal 48.96. And then my weekly check-in is when I'm doing my envelopes. And then, again, just to keep um, the Capital One card really under control, I'm using this as my transaction log for that. So what, what does go on Capital One are my subscriptions. So I know every month my mobile phone. And that's $379 my telephone and that's um, for work and then I get reimbursed is 45. Elements and that's a massage uh, is 70. Ali Edwards, which is a story kit is 15. Audible is 16. And then if I use Instacart or I use HelloFresh, that goes on here too, and I just take that out of that budget. But these are my known that are gonna go onto this account every month. I forgot one, internet. I'm sorry if you hear my daughter's dog barking because I put him uh, in the other room. I'm filming out on the kitchen table today and he is not happy with me right now. So sorry that you can hear him. Okay. So um, I'm gonna go back to the monthly and then we'll jump into the cash stuffing. So for the monthly, what I do is I go ahead and lay them out and they're color coded of when they're gonna come out of the account. Now, February um, is a short month. There is an extra day this month, but 
I'll be paid and my husband will be paid on the 28th again, but that will be obviously for March. Um, so it's a little weird how this month is going to roll out. Um, so if you look at fixed incomes, I colored that in yellow. Um, this is a book by something love, um, with love. Sorry guys. I got it at Michael's comes in a pack of two. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember what the name is, so I'll try to think of it. Um, she's actually a sticker shop that, uh, licensed to her, some of her products to Michael's. So it's super cute. Um, so this is my mortgage. It's already come out of my account. Today is the 31st because it's on the bank days. And then my mobile phone has already hit my um, Capital One. And with AT&T, it's weird because I used to just have it come out of my checking account. And when I moved it over to my Capital One, thinking I might as well go ahead and get miles for it, um, they moved up my payment date almost by two weeks. So very interesting. I'm not sure why that is. And then my water and my electric usually come out about the 16th. So I'll just put that on the 15th because it's a short month. They'll probably come out a little earlier. And these are my only two bills that I don't have direct billed. I pay them online, but because I never know what they're going to be, I just feel better if I go in and select my date that they're going to come out and um, I just keep it up top of mind a little bit more. I live in Arizona, so my electric bill can go from $100 to six or $700. So, um, so my water bill is, what did I say? That was going to be 143 And this is APS. I've estimated 200. I am using the friction erasable pens and then I can go through later once I get my, that bill and go ahead and put my actual in there. And then on, I don't know why these are really fighting me coming off of here. On the eighth, um, Netflix comes out. And then entry link is 45 and that comes out on the it's like a sticker paper and I peeled them all off of my sticker paper and put them on here and I'm not really sure what's happening here okay 14th Okay, maybe one of these days I'm gonna fight stickers today. Okay, what else? Um, auto insurance, life insurance, internet, natural gas, and then pest control. They haven't called me yet, but it's probably gonna be around the 15th, 16th is usually, they kind of come mid month. Now it's gonna be very different in our budget and I don't know if it's even gonna be as part of the video is that my husband did um, accept another position so he's back to work. His retirement lasted about two weeks. Kind of feel sorry for him. Um, but he chose this. And he did buy a car, a very nice car, that he's been saving for for a while. Um, but he didn't pay it 100% off because he didn't want to take the money for taxes out of our account until we knew what the taxes were going to be. 
So he is going to take his check that he gets from his job and keep it in a separate account and we'll pay off the car in a couple months and then um, build the savings back up before we even look at where we're going to do to budget that. So he's a saver by trade. <laughs> um, I am not. So we felt like that was the best way to handle um, having a car payment. We haven't had a car payment in at least, oh my gosh, um, 15, maybe longer than that, maybe 20 years since we've had a car payment. And I really was against it, but this is the car that he wanted and he's been saving. So I told him as long as it was paid off within a couple of months, he could go for it. So, I mean, he did work 25 years nonstop. Um, he should get to have a little fun, but um, I just do not enjoy car payments. So. And I know uh, it's probably not the right um, way to for Dave Ramsey, who would never separate your funds, but I think if somebody's a great saver and the other one is not, um, it's gonna make sense for us, so we'll see. Okay, so for, for subscriptions, I have Elements, that's 70, Allie Edwards, that's 15, and Audible, which is 16. So for these, um, remember these do go right onto Capital One, but I always like to move the money. Sometimes I'll pay Capital One mid-month and then pay the balance off at the end of the month just so that I know that I'm taking the money off of the app and where it needs to go. I'm not sure this was my best choice to do it this way, but let's see. Okay, so Elements is due on the 15th. It's quite the busy little day here. Um, Allie Edwards is due the 15th. I'll put it on the 14th. And Audible is due at the end of the month. On the 28th. Okay. And then um, income, honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So I did income as purple, so paycheck one, paycheck two, and paycheck three. All came in on today, on the 31st. So you know how it is at the beginning of the month, you think you have all this money. Well, then when I sat down and plotted it all out and looked at my sinking funds, I was like, yeah, we don't really have that much money. All good to know. <laughs> That's why you want to do your cash stuffing at the beginning of the month when you feel like you have a lot of money and it just puts you right back into reality. I think because last month we were really shorted a check and we really weren't planning on that. And luckily we had been saving, kind of waiting for this to happen, but um, I was still a little unprepared for it because um, he thought he was gonna have a check on the 24th and he did not, so it worked out fine. And then um, he probably won't get paid for the new job until the 15th, because he just started last week. He's like two weeks in. Okay, so that's what I know of so far, and then let's do cash stuffing. That's always everybody's favorite. So, um, last month the way I did this was I actually went ahead and put the full amount of my budget here and then carried it through um, instead of just putting down the amount that I was putting in cash stuffing. So, and, that, and I think that worked easier for me to keep track of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way this month as well. So, just to make my line straight. Somewhat straight. Um, the reason I always lay down my sticker kits before the video is because it takes me forever to get them straight. So I wouldn't want you all to have to sit there and watch me um, take my stickers up and down. 
And I know in our description of our sticker kits, it says that they're not removable. We did switch to remo removable paper um, so that you can pick them up and take them down as many times as you need. Okay, so for groceries, my budget for the month is 500. For eating out is 200. Um, for recreation, what did I put this month? I put 50. But I'm only gonna stuff 40 and I'll tell you why that is later. For personal care, my budget is 130. Um, I do get a massage every month. I do add 30 minutes, so it's a 90 minute massage, and that's $30, and then with tip. And then this month I need a pedicure as well. Allowance is 200. Household is 220. Giving is 400. And entertainment, I put 50. No, I put 61. Now, I left entertainment in my account. Um, my sister that lives out of state is coming into town. We're going to a play. I've already paid for the ticket for the play and lunch. Um, so this is just, I'm gonna leave an account in case we wanna do something else. And she's coming at the end of the month, so I may pull that out on the 15th, or I might just you know keep it in there. Um, for my ticket to the play, I Venmoed my sister, so I left that money in the account for my January budget. But I'm not sure what else we're doing that weekend. And then for um, my envelopes, though, I don't put the whole amount in because I'm going to do half and half, so half will go in when I um, stuff on the 15th. So let's put this to the side. Um, these are the cash envelopes, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I switched this around for January, and I hated it. So I'm back to my uh, Maldron Filofax versus the Filofax, um, I think it's the Safriano. I don't know why, it just, it was really stiff and it was super long and it, I just felt like it was really bulky, which is weird because this is actually thicker than the other one, but it's pliable. Um, so in here is everything budget related. So my checkbook, my monthly calendar where I kind of plot bills out on, any gift cards that I have, are in here and then my envelopes just snap right in here. So I really like this a lot. I tried to use the other and I just couldn't. So I went back to this one. Okay, so let's get started. I know everybody loves the other one and I really tried really hard to use it and I just hated it. I kept taking the envelopes out and putting them in my purse and they were getting all bent up and no. Did not work well for me, so. Okay, so I took out $870 to stuff cash envelopes this week. Um, so I just went to the bank. Um, it's kind of funny because I go to a little branch that's inside of a store versus you know the main branch. So I always seem to see the same people and they're always like, oh, it's cash shopping time, which is kind of cute. Um, Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is allowance. I give myself $50 a week. I'm not even gonna go ahead and put the tracker in here because I never use it. Because quite frankly, I want one category that I don't have to track, that I know what's in here, and that's just to be spent as needed. So, so for this one, I do two 20s and a 10 for this week. And then I do two 20s and a 10 underneath my tabs. And this is from, uh, I think it's a time for everything. And I have a tab. So whatever my envelopes are, I also have a tab with the same name. And that goes under the tab. This stays at home. And that way I don't overspend in any category. Um, for groceries, it's 250. I'm going to go ahead and put 150 in the envelope and 100 to stay at home. Um, my husband was out of town this week, so I didn't do any cooking. And then 
with his new job, he's been getting home so late that we've kind of just been warming up things. So I do need to go to the grocery store and get some meal prepping done, but we are going out of town this weekend, so I know it's not gonna happen until Monday or Tuesday. Um, I'll just put two, one, fund. 150 and last month I did no spin days I actually was really good about no spin days until the end when everything kind of was a free-for-all um, so I think I'm gonna do the same thing this month and then whatever was left in my envelopes I then use for other things because we missed that last paycheck so this time I like to just save it and keep it for vacation so grocery is funded there eating out gets a hundred and I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole amount in and this needs to last me for two weeks I have found though that since he's back at work and getting home so late we have not been going out so um, this money will last me longer than normal Now we are going out of town this weekend, but I budgeted that out of vacation fund. So part of this was his Christmas gift, um, but the hotel and then we're going to Vegas. So if we decide to go gambling at all, that will come out of um, the money I put aside for vacation for the trip. So um, this budget does not need to pay for anything this weekend because that was already budgeted for and worked out. And then giving gets 200, 100 will go into the envelope. Um, <clears throat> I was gonna leave one of the hundreds in the account because I'll probably watch church online and then I just donate online. But I think what I'll do is just when I go next weekend, I'll just put both in. But um, for now, I'm just gonna put one in here and then the other one will go underneath the tab and we'll stay at home until I decide what I'm doing. Okay, personal care is getting 40, is that right? Yes, personal care is getting 40. I don't know about you, I cannot figure out that it's now February. <laughs> That's frightening. And I like to break this up a little bit so that I can, um, it's easier to tip this way. It's that way, right? That's what I did. I'm gonna put it in here. <clears throat> I'm almost at my free upgrade, so um, then I won't have to pay the 30. And then recreation, no, that's not right. Recreation got 40. Personal care got 40. Okay, one moment, please. This is why you should have your cheat sheet in front of you. So personal care is getting 40. No, recreation is getting 40. So let me just get this one up. It has been quite the day. Um, it's been quite the week this week at <laughs> work. It has literally been crazy town. So I'm um, trying to get this done before we leave tomorrow. So I'm so sorry if I'm a little bit um, scattered. That's not my normal, um, but it's been one of those weeks. So 40 in recreation. And then for personal care is 70. 220s, 110, and all of the fives. I had hopes that I was going to get to go get a pedicure today, but that did not happen. So, all good. 
Okay, so the last thing that I need to stuff is, okay, this $100 needs to go under groceries. Um, that was left over from the grocery money. And then these two are household. And put those under my household tab and that is for the girl who comes and helps clean. And she comes next week, I believe, but I never take this with me. I leave this at home. So all of this goes back into here. And that is so that next week on Friday, I will go to this and I will take money out and restuff my envelopes based on what I spent. And then on the 15th, this should be empty. And my envelopes hopefully will have a little bit of money, but if not, then I'll restuff them again. So these I'll go back into this. And I don't know why I hated that other um, system so much because everybody raves about it, but I don't know. It was very long, if that makes sense. It just did not fit into my purse. And I don't want to use this as my wallet. I still like having my wallet um, just separately. So I don't know. Okay, so that goes into here. So between that and here, so all the envelopes are stuffed. And then if I go back to here, um, everything's written down in here. Entertainment I left in the account. And personal care, I le left part of that in the account. I put 70 in now and I still have another 60 that I can use the next time we stuff. And then everything else is, um, so everything here is for the month. Okay. And then when you look at the next month, I'll do a check-in, whatever I spent, I'll log, and then what is remaining comes down and becomes this budget down here. Okay, you guys can't see that, can you? <laughs> oh, for the Lord. Um, so what will happen next week um, when I review my cash envelopes, whatever I spent will go into this column. What is remaining is here. So it's what I budgeted minus what I spent will be remaining. Remaining comes down here and becomes the new budget and so forth. So by the end of the month, I should have um, either zero in my envelopes or at least I'll know exactly where the money went from the envelopes. And then as far as the fixed expenses, as things come in that are actual, um, then I just move it over here and write what the difference was. Um, so like electric, I don't know. Water trash, I already found out. So that's an actual and zero. So that's how that will go through. If I end up with anything unbudgeted, that will go into the actual and then I'll have to figure out where that money's gonna come from. Okay, so sinking funds. Um, so when I do my budget, I back into my sinking funds. So what I mean by that is, I write down all my fixed expenses, what I think my income is going to be. I write down my cash envelope. So if there's a check right here, that means it's a cash envelope. And then I put in my snowball and then I kind of back into my sinking fund. So this is where I am on this right now. So medical copay. So for the first time ever, I have a deductible. Um, now I did just find out about the medical account that we have and that would more than pay for the deductible. But um, with the deductible and the spending account, you have to submit it and everything else. So I just want to have the cash on hand for the deductible just so that, you know, I can pay myself back from the HSA account, but I don't want to just ever fear or my daughter to be concerned about going to the doctors if she doesn't have the cash on her. So we told her she's going off of our insurance when she's 25, which is in October. But in the meantime, since she is on our insurance, we're just making sure she feels comfortable to go to the doctor when she needs to go. Um, fitness, my gym closed in November. So I am joining another gym. Now my work has a great program where they pay it's $100 for the monthly fee. They pay $75, I pay 25, as long as I go four times over the month, then um, they pay their part and I just pay the 25. And it's done through a payroll deduction. 
but I wanted to have the money in the account in case you know something happens and I don't go to the gym and they remove the whole hundred dollars. I have money that I could put into the account if I needed to. The gym doesn't open until the summer. I thought it was supposed to open in the spring, but now it's summer. So I'm just gonna keep building up this account until it opens up and they handle the membership and all that stuff. Um, vacation 300, I've got two different vacations planned. Um, one in, well, one in March, which I'm not sure where we're going to go. Probably we'll go back to Disneyland because we bought passes. And then I have a big vacation in June, a two week, um, vacation with my parents and my sisters. Now my parents have paid for everything, which is such a blessing. Um, so what I will need will be spending money and excursion money. So I'm saving up. I want to have at least a thousand for that just in case. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of excursions there's going to be or what I'm going to want to do. I'm not a big shopper, so I probably won't be doing a lot of shopping on the trip, but you know, it's just good to have um, money with you so you don't worry about it. Um, Christmas and gifts. So I did completely deplete that account in December. So I'm building that back up again. Um, so I'm starting with 500. Now it is my son-in-law's birthday this month. So I already know part of that is going to go towards his birthday gift. And then the remainder will go into the fund. Um, household is blank right now. We are in the process of redoing our floors. So if you've ever started with a project like redoing your flooring, then all of a sudden the cabinetry needs to be painted and the countertops are right. So part of the money for the floors is already in the account. So we've been saving for a while for that. The other part for the rest of the things that we're doing is going to come out of my husband's paycheck for his new job. So he's saving on that end as well. So we've shopped for things. We have an idea. We know how much we need to have before we start, but we also want that buffer because we know things are going to be more than we had anticipated. So, um, the flooring alone was quite hefty, but then when we started to look at countertops and painting cabinetry and things like that, um, I literally just walked out of the store. I was done. I was like, this is just going to be a snowball effect. So, um, we just took a step back and we decided that we needed to have more money put aside before we started any of that process. And then, um, story camp. So I have put on my bucket list to go to Ali Edwards as a story camp in Eugene, Oregon in May and it's 42 people. And I have admired her. I followed her for years now and I've taken a lot of her online courses and this is more of an intimate surrounding you're you're with her and she's taking you through different things photography journaling writing your own story it is scrapbooking but it's a little bit different it's one little word it's, it's really um, I do project life and I follow her on project life as well so I am super excited um, the class was 600 I did put that on my um, chase card and paid that off this month or we'll be paying that off this month and then my hotel is booked and that's 600 and then my flight is 400 so right there is like $1,600 and then I still need to have money for food so um, so I have almost the whole thing paid just these, but my goal is 2000. So I still need to put a little bit more money in, but because we kind of got that extra check, which I don't know if we're going to get next month, I went ahead and wanted to fund this sinking fund as soon as possible. And I don't need to pay for the hotel until I check in and it's at the end of May. But again, I just want to have the money there and ready. And then, um, we already discussed, um, the debt payoff and what that's going on. So I think that's it. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you followed my YouTube channel for a while, you know that um, this is where everything in my budget starts. And then from here, it goes into the Every Dollar app, which is the Dave Ramsey app. And then my weekly check-ins and all of my pre-planning goes into the deluxe monthly. So the two together has been very successful for me in budgeting because it gives me total visibility. Um, but I think with cash envelopes, if you've not used cash envelopes and it was, it has been very hard for me to get used to them because, um, I work from home, so I know when I'm going to go to the grocery store, so I grab those envelopes, but there are so many times where I'm tempted to borrow from one category to another, and that's really 
what you don't want to do with cash envelopes because that way it forces you to stay on a budget. So, um, as somebody who just swipes my debit card all the time, it, you know, that was easy for me and I'd come home and figure it out where this is a lot more intentional in my spending and using the cash envelope. So I highly recommend it. It particularly if you're just starting budgeting to give yourself those behaviors that you're looking for. Um, it's not easy. Believe me, it is very hard for me to go and take $870 in cash out of my account at one time. It really gives me anxiety. Um, but I have found that I'm a lot more successful when I plan and I set it up at the beginning of the month. So good luck to you on all of your budgeting, um, journeys. I appreciate you all being along for mine. If you have not subscribed already, please do so. And please hit the bell for notification. And we appreciate all that your kind words and all of the support that we have received since we started this process. Thank you so much and have a great day.